President Trump also meeting with the CEOs of the big three automakers. This is Ford is announcing plans to build Lincolns in China by 2019. Uh, one of the main reasons, of course, is they want to avoid a 25% tariff. Meanwhile, the border tax is a hot topic here. So are we about to see a very dangerous tit for tat over tariffs to GOP strategist Pete Snyder, former Bush 41 aide Mark Serrano, and Democratic strategist Richard Fowler? Uh, let me start with you, Mark. I, you know, it's uh, good news for, for Ford. They're selling a lot of products in China. Bad news is that they, have, they can't export them from here, and they have to take on a Chinese partner. That is not the definition of fair trade. This is a great case study, Charles, about what's terribly wrong with our trade with China and should go to the top of the president's agenda when he meets with uh, Chinese President uh, Xi Jinping on April 6 at Mar-a-Lago. Because, you know, Ford is caught between a great wall and a hard place. They, you know, they have to sell product there because it's a growing marketplace with the middle income growing in China. But at the same time, you know, they're forced to have to take on a partner on the ground in China. So this is, this is you know, a perfect case study example of what's wrong, why we have a $347 billion trade deficit with China, and the president is going to have to threaten new tariffs just to get them to back off of these tariffs they've already had in place for years. Richard, uh, President uh, uh, Trump, the first Republican to win Michigan since 1988, is going to go there. He's going to take a victory lap and probably deliver more good news for the locals there. Uh, so, so how do you see it all shaking out from, from, from your point of view and from the Democrats' point of view? Well, I got to tell you, I think it's a good thing to see the president in Detroit today. Um, Detroit's a place where I spent a lot of time. Uh, and, but here's the problem I think President Trump has, right? He has a problem with this idea of he can't go after China and say, hey, listen, we're upset at your tariff, but at the same time saying that he wants to put a 20% border tax on, on Mexico. So what we, the president has Why to really... Why can't he do that? Of, I'm, you, you got because, me confused. Because I think that, well, because it's two different type of policies here. You can't say that we are against tariffs when it's against, for us, but we're for tariffs when it's, for, when it's against us, right? And that's exactly where the president is. And it's a teetering balance. He needs to come up with whatever the Trump trade doctrine is going to be, and it can't be campaign slogans and one-liners. and one -liners. It has to be a larger conversation of how he plans to fix trade or equalize trade between the United States and other global trading partners. You know, Pete, uh, we do have a, a tariff already, but it's only 2.5 percent. It's relatively low, and a lot of people are saying these other countries, China and Mexico, have a value-added tax, uh, which is rebated. In other words, uh, when their exporters send something to this country, they, they get money back or they get money off of their taxes, giving them a distinct un, un, uh, disadvantage. Sure, it's, it's government subsidies, and this is something that got Donald Trump campaigned against. Look, he's been talking about a uh, border adjustment tax. Uh, I don't think he believes in it. I think Donald Trump knows it's going to be bad for American consumers, bad for American retailers, but he's using it on leverage for, for Mexico. He wants them to go back to where they were supposed to be on the value-added tax, period. It's all leverage. Donald Trump knows how to play the game like anyone else, better than anyone else, and we're never going to have a border adjustment tax in this country. You know, I, I hope we don't. I'm not for that. And I think the idea would be to pry open foreign markets, not punish American consumers. Having said that, Mark, uh, I got in early this morning and started going through the World Trade Organization. 39 cases brought against China. Most of them were, were resolved. Uh, there's about four new ones from last year and this year. And it makes me think I don't have a lot of confidence in the World Trade Organization or any of these other outside entities making this a, a, a level or fair playing field. Well, exactly, Charles. I mean, the, the entry into the World Trade Organization by China 15 or so years ago, you know, really sort of gave them credibility that they didn't deserve. This is a centrally controlled economy. They, they're, and their economy right now is, is sliding back a little bit, so they're looking for new ways to stimulate growth. So they're going to do it on the backs of American workers uh, and at the expense of American workers. So the reality is we can't trust the trade organization. We can't trust China. Donald Trump is the kind of guy who's going to sit down with the Chinese president. He's going to lay out all these issues, and he's going to expect some change because they're centrally controlling their economy. They're, you know, they're, their workers are half starved as it is. We need some labor reform over in China, and it's okay for him to demand these things because they're cleaning our clock. Politicians have accepted this fate of ours against China for years and years. Trump can actually change it, and he's got to threaten 
tariffs. I don't want to see tariffs either, but he has to threaten it. They're throwing tariffs on all sorts of categories of products of ours right now. Yeah, their tariffs are, are uh, much Charles, higher. Go ahead, Richard. What, one point here, and I, I, I understand what you're saying, right? I think we also have to find ways to counterbalance China beyond just having this conversation with tariffs. What you notice globally is that China is investing, foreign direct investment, all over Africa, all over parts of Asia, all over Eastern Europe, and the United States is not playing in these markets, right? In, China, in Africa, we're not playing at all besides our diplomatic work through PEPFAR. So if we really want to counterbalance China beyond taking them on in tariffs, we need to start taking them on where they're investing all by themselves. They're in a market all by themselves in Africa, and we're not playing that game. Well, Richard, how, how about this? How about this? How about you and the rest of the loony left, instead of protesting Donald Trump everywhere in every city in America, why don't you focus on the human rights violations of China? Why don't you wait actually minute, practice minute, what sir. you preach? That's going to put sir. pressure. I have if you have consumer... I, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Before you ta connect me to the loony left, remember, I was one of the first people when, when he got elected to talk about how we work with Africa to counterbalance China. The pieces in the Daily Caller, you should check it yeah. out. I think the president hey, needs look, to double down. I think that's down. great, but I think wait the left Let needs to focus point. on China and let's Let have me, consumers exactly, speak. Exactly, but focusing on China of, does not only time, mean please. negotiating them in tariffs. Focusing yeah. on China also means going to where they are excelling and taking them on you in know, those fights. Well, and that's what, what we're not doing. Here's the thing, guys. Uh, Donald Trump been in office for 50-some-odd days. And you're right, Richard. China has been aggressive around the world, cutting amazing deals. Japan has woken up to that. They've pledged $25 billion to Africa. I think we would be smart to do that as well uh, because, you know what, we're not, we don't have to lead on the rest of the world that we did before, which is why we've got to be tough and protect our market.